on this episode. After Utah, the team needs a good result. The front of the run right was the contact. Stalled the car. Professional rally driver. Backward goes out. So yeah, done. Scott walked up to me, but he goes, I don't want to have the Hansons line up front row inside on me. Can you beat them tomorrow? Got to keep the door shut on the Hansons. They were they're good at that. Definitely not. That's a mistake from Scott at the start. It's a chest, not checkers, man. <laughs> that was bold. This is Launch Control. It's been just five days since round one in Utah. Teams are loaded into the ERX facility in Minnesota, ahead of the second round of the Nitro Rallycross Series. After Utah, the team needs a good result. You know, they know they had the pace, they got the job done in qualifying, but they did not get the job done on race day. It did not work out. For Subaru, the pressure is on. Test, so get with AJ if you still need to coordinate your new movements out of here. If we don't succeed here, not only are we two rounds into the season and we don't have good results yet, but we've also wasted one of our best opportunities. Okay, thank you. The ERX track, when I, when I saw it for the first time, like my mouth just dropped. It is different than Utah, it's better. It's, it's purposely built for the style of car we have. It's got big jumps and more importantly, it has very wide flowing corners. We did know Subaru had been testing there, so we, you know, they should have the pace. They should be a little bit of an advantage, to be fair. If you've been testing there before, you should be able to nail it. With practice underway, Subaru digs deep to find their speed and confidence going into two days of racing. You're going 50 feet. My longest was 163. Travis has taught me a lot about jumping. But that is so I'm Being able to come in after a practice session and look at each other's data and to talk to each other about how we're taking different lines and us both being at such a high level in the sport, it really helps both of us sort of up the game and it's definitely the feather in our cap. But so I know I'm gaining a lot on the jumps, so the fact that he's still quicker means that definitely his way in the corners is probably. We, we had some intel from testing, um, so I'd heard some rumors that Scott was going short on the jumps and then Travis just told everyone anyway. He's like, you can fly 130 feet, he goes, or you can do what Scott did and come up short and it's faster. Scott is one of those guys who's, who's you know, super calculated with everything. So Scott was calculating you come up short on the jump and the wheels are on the ground early, you can set the car up for the next corner better. I think probably the team going there with some data, knowing how quick they were in Utah, it would have been quite a positive experience. You know, you're not going there with quite the same worries that you had back in Utah. The next morning, the teams line up for the all-important battle brackets. Strong results here lead to front row grid positions in tomorrow's heat races and a better chance at making the final. A head-to-head -head battle victory earns a single championship point and advances you to the next battle. Subaru looks to dominate. In the third Subaru, Andreas Bakkerud faces a difficult first battle against Steve Arpin and makes an early exit. Look at that, absolute hit. Hit three times, I reckon, there, one on the way. Nothing up toward again, just letting him know, but it's too late, Steve Arpin's done this. Arpin goes through, and Bakkerud goes out, done. Not what he had hoped for. For Pastrana, the first two battles are a breeze, but now he faces one of Subaru's main rivals, a Hansen brother. Let's get ready to send it. Travis Pastrana, Kevin Hansen, who's gonna get the whole shot? Forward contact made once again. He's pushing him around. Corner by corner, it's a tight race. I'm not sure about this one, Pastrana. Oh, Pastrana. Proof Subaru has the pace against world rallycross cars. Side by side to the line, Kevin Hansen gonna drive out drag him. He's got him, they change places three times. A late race move demotes Pastrana into second and out of the battle bracket final. But the result still guarantees him a front row spot in the opening heats tomorrow. Subaru's hopes now rest with Scott Speed as he aims to win his next battle. win here will advance him to the final. 
So he's hoping for the inside line. He actually tags speed just a little bit there, but it's close enough. To do so, he has to get past Steve Arpin. An overjump by Arpin makes easy work of it. He's quick enough. Oh, Arpin is! Oh, lands on the front right corner. He falls! Oh, fails! And he parked on the track. The whole front right corner is off. Arpin just landed that. Such an extreme angle, Jack. Scott's speed is going to continue on, and now the work begins. Speed now prepares for the final battle bracket. We ran a clean race. We had good speed. Uh, Track's getting rough out there. Conditions are changing a lot, so we're having to adapt as best we can, but we got good speed. One more to go. We have one race left to go in the bracket. This is for the top qualifier spot tomorrow. It turns out Scott and Travis have been discussing strategy. So come the end of the battle bracket, he turns up late for the final. And late. Now, normally, that would have been it, he would have been out, but there wasn't a thing to say if you're late, you know, so, so they waited for him, almost as if he was trying to miss the final. All right, Kevin Hansen, Scott Speed, you can see him right there. Travis is one of just a few in the paddock who know what's about to happen next. Oh, train. Sorry, guys, two seconds. What's the what's the Holy cow, it's raining. Scott walked up to me right before the final uh, of the, the bracket racing. He goes, we can line up one, two, if you can beat the Hansons tomorrow. But in order for both the Hansons to be in your heat and for me to get the other heat, I have to forfeit this round. But he goes, I don't want to have the Hansons line up front row inside on me. Can you beat them tomorrow? I looked him in the eye and I said, yes. He said, so you're not gonna overdrive? You're gonna drive like you belong here? Like you believe that you can actually win this thing? I said, yes, sir. He goes, all right. We're going 1-2 tomorrow. Here we go, Hanson and Speed here for our bracket battle finals. If Scott wins the final battle, he'll face Travis in the same heat race tomorrow. And only one Subaru will earn a front row spot in the final. Hey, look at that, Scott. Doesn't even leave the line. <laughs> Scott throws the race in order to put one Subaru in each heat race. No. Do you, I mean, is that strategy? Just no, say? definitely not. That's a mistake from Scott at the start. No. So that was, uh, no, that was it. He wanted to, uh, he didn't want to go into By doing so, he gives up one championship point, but gives the team a better chance at locking out the front row tomorrow. Is, is Scott going to turn right and head out, head out to the paddock? Yeah, I think he is. It's a controversial move. That was bold. Scott, he's, he's always playing every angle. He's the smartest guy out there. Scott wants to be one, two front row Subaru going in the final. Um, by him not taking off right there, that means he believes that I can win my heat, that he believes he can win his heat, um, and that we can go one, two, front row in the final. It's a chess, not checkers, man. Uh, no brainer decision. No brainer. I mean, that uh, shows the level of our team to be able to, to think about that kind of stuff. It gives us as a team the best chance for both of us to be on the front row of different heat races. Uh, so we're not bad, we're not taking points away from each other because bottom line, I mean, Travis and I, I think are the fastest two cars here this whole week. So uh, it's just a no-brainer decision for us. The day ends with Subaru's strategy working as planned, but not everyone agrees. All right, guys, we're good. we got more stuff tomorrow. Thanks for coming out. The next morning, as fans file into the venue, the standard pre-race meeting and setup is underway. But overnight, the series had more to say about Subaru's tactical decisions. It was uh, the classic team manager and driver come to the race hauler for a meeting and uh, let us know they did not appreciate the decision. So they, they issued a, a financial judgment, which was a donation to a local charity, didn't affect the outcome of the race, and we were fine with that. You know, racing is, uh, it's a game, you know, and there's rules to the game. It's my job to figure out what all the rules are and how to best exploit everything I can to, to, to gain an advantage. As far as racing and as far as championship, as far as Subaru, Scott, myself, right decision. Uh, me saying what our decision was on TV, wrong decision. Yeah, Travis Estrada is giving the lowdown here. What happened with Scott? Uh, Scott Speed, uh, he goes, you start front row with Kevin. If I don't win, I'll start front row, and that puts us front row for the final. If you win and I can win, we can go Subaru 1 2. So. That was honestly less planning than it was just making a decision. That was, okay, we're, we're at this point right now. Do we go for the win? Do we not? Do we take the choice in the heat race? And, and we made that choice. 
because the heat races are so important. If you win a heat race, you go straight through to the front row of the final. He decided that being in second in that, in that battle bracket was gonna get him the best chance to win the event, which was the goal, and he went out and did it. When it comes to technical, it's a much easier line. You know, did you break the rules or not? But this was interpretation of qualifying regulations. So, yeah, okay, maybe if you're a fan of one of the European teams that didn't figure out which one they wanted to be in, you might say, meh, you know, I'm not happy. But I, I think if you're, if you're really into your motorsport and you've, you've clocked the fact that someone's done something very clever indeed, I like it. You know, it's up to us as, uh, you know, as Nitro Rallycross to, to rewrite the rules a bit, isn't it? And, and make sure that people can't do it in future. Regardless of the popularity of the call, racing is set to resume. For Subaru, that means making their strategy stick. They head to the line where they enjoy front row positions in each heat. So you've got your comments on social media, you've got the organizers pretty annoyed, you've got a big fat fine, uh, but you've still got what you wanted from qualifying and it's on to race day. You've got to make it work on race day and they made it work. Heat one, Pastrana front row outside with the two Hanson brothers inside. Travis needs to hold position through corner one. Stay even, and he'll have the inside at corner two. Pastrana's got past Kevin Hansen on the run to turn one. He's made the big Subaru work sideways, and this time he keeps the door shut. Pastrana is out front and in control. This is the crucial move they needed. but Pastrana getting the clean air, but he's got both Hansons in his rear view mirror. This is a strategy that the, that the Subaru boys played yesterday. If Scott Speed was in P2, they might lock up the front row if they get the victory. He takes the win. Step one, done. Now, on to step two. Speed lines up inside on the front row. Bakarud brings up the rear. The next few corners will either confirm their strategy or cost them. The team holds their collective breath. See who gets the best start this time. Arkham's got a bang at the start. The Hyundai are going to try and squeeze speed on the inside. Speed push him out wide though. Backward up alongside Larson gets in his door. Scott is clear in the lead. Bakarud moves from last to second. Subaru could not only lock out the front row, they could own the top three spots. The rest of the competitors are not going to like what they see. You know what, they might be 10 grand lighter this morning thanks to that fine for unsportsmanlike behaviour, but they're handing it to them in a very, this is a professional sports team, they're getting out there, you know, they're, they're absolutely killing it right now. The three heat races end with all three Subarus advancing straight to the final. As the cars return to the paddock, the entire team knows their day just got easier and the pressure just got lighter for everyone. For Bakarud, who hasn't had the results he's hoped for, it's a relief to perform for the team when they needed it most. Whoa, back row, buddy. <laughs> I was texting with Joe, my spotter, and uh, like normally in rallycross you make a plan A, B, C, D, E, and you still don't get your plan, but my plan A worked from start to finish, so amazing job by the Subaru uh, family, Yanis with the stars and Dan, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was carnage. Everything is going to plan. I mean, yeah, well, all you gotta do is make the best decision you can with what you got, and you've executed super good all weekend, so. Being proud of everybody. Uh, it's awesome for me because he believes in me as a driver, and I think that's the first time that's happened uh, where I believe I'm fast enough to win. And at the end of the day, 
put our, ourselves where we need to be as a team to go win this championship and to get Subaru 1-2. <laughs> I'm just going to drop the mic no, right no, here. It's expensive. It's expensive. <laughs> Subaru can sit back and watch as the race day goes on. Their early success avoids the semi-final and last chance qualifier races and all the carnage involved. It confirms their day one tactic was the right one. In Rallycross, it's, it's so hard to make a strategy uh, that benefits everybody, right? We got a three car factory program here. And just yesterday looking at it, uh, we took that chance with Scott. We knew what it meant for the, for the heats. Uh, and, it, and it's worked. We're skipping f semifinals, LCQs, everything. We're going straight to the final, and not only are we going straight to the final, we've locked up the front row. So for me, it's a perfect strategy. It was well within sporting because it's simply taking the rule book they wrote and finding where we can take advantage of different areas as a three car team to move forward for success at the final. The team prepares as the afternoon passes. While they've done what they can to make it easier, they know that the job is anything but done. The only championship points up for grabs on day two are in the final. Despite all the success, there's still a big task ahead. Here we go then, round two, final time, 10 cars, 6,000 horsepower, there can only be one winner. Is it gonna be a Subaru podium lockout? Can the Hansons continue their domination of Nitro Rallycross? Yeah, they won both the heats, put Pastrana and Speed straight on the front row. They got exactly the tactical decision that they've made and they even managed to stick backward on row two. They were in the best possible shape they could be to take a great result at ERX. The grid set, the revs rise. Are you ready, send it? This race will either put the team back on track in their title hunt or put them off the back. Scott leads into the second corner. Speed with a better start, but Strana back for a two, back and shuts the door, and Kevin Hansen immediately tries on the inside line. Kevin gonna run it wide. Pastrana falls back to fifth. It's Scott Speed though who leads as the exit the hairpin. Bakarud had the inside line with speed. He's into third, but it won't last long. Oh, oh we got the wall! Oh, wow. Bakarud! Bakarud hit the wall with the front right of the Subaru! <laughs> oh my goodness! How did he keep it upright? I mean, that was amazing! One lap down, get Scott Speed, get on the podium, and get a Subaru for the first time this year. Bakarud's misfortune promotes Pastrana back into the podium chase. He's up to third and on the attack. The low line, Pastrana up the inside, and Kevin Hansen gonna get this done. Scott Speed checking up Kevin Hansen, Pastrana gonna get to B2 here. Kevin's got the inside line over the jump. Waiting with the long right hander now. If Pastrana can hold up around the outside, he can be inside with the hairpin at the top of the hill. Oh, He's got it done. Pastrana. Pastrana's got it done. Gets the pass. Scott Speed, Pastrana 1-2, and Hansen sitting in third. Absolute well done by the 199 to get that number two spot. With Subaru now in the power position, they work together to execute their longer joker laps. First up, Pastrana. And there, Pastrana taking that Yokohama tire joker lap. He loses position, but he gets it out of the way. Two laps left to go. He emerges in third, with both cars in front of him yet to take the joker. All eyes shift to Scott. His pace at the front will either clear the gap or concede position to his teammate. Hi Kevin, if Kevin doesn't go joker here, our oh, Travis has responded, sorry, Scott's responded, so Scott's speed goes this for the win. Travis Kevin. Pastrana coming out, can't quite get past, there's a lap to go, so they're still gonna race to the yep. line. I thought he might just get in front there, and that would have given him the, the pole position, if you like, for the win, but he's so close between two and a half. Backwards in P5 at the minute. Subaru sweeping through, high and low on the line. Nobody else can match the Subaru's pace. This is a huge success for the Subaru team. By race end, it's Subaru 1-2, with a significant gap to third. The blue crew is making it to the finish. There's Scott Speed coming across. Travis Pastrana in second. Blue Subaru 1 and 2. Well done with Kevin Hansen coming in third and Timmy Hansen in fourth. A Hansen did not. Job done. Brilliant result. P1, P2. For me, the main thing is Scott Speed. It's quite emotional to see him go from being grateful for being okay. It was almost like another relief. I'm also grateful that I'm still a great race car driver. Awesome!
Holy smokes! Scott, I think, closed the book on his injury with that win at ERX. You could see it when he got out of the car. So pumped for Subaru. What a cool event. Woo! It was a huge moment for him and a huge moment for the team because it meant, okay, this guy's back. He's back 100%. America on top! Yeah! Uh, I, like, I hate to lose to this guy more than anything, but he got me here. I appreciate him. And uh, at least to, it wasn't a Hanson that won this one. So <laughs> yeah, I love those guys too, but I've just been tired of getting my butts kicked by the Euros and we were able to track him down. Subaru was the fastest car this week. Scott's put in a lot of work. He's, uh, he's definitely the one that Scott is here. And I just, I want to thank all the fans. Look at this, it's freaking awesome. I'm doing, I know it's a second, but I'm doing a shoe anyway, man. I guess hey. this is what the cool guys do. <laughs> Cheers, man, hey. Cheers, buddy. Ah. Hey, he won, but I'm gonna bask in that glory because we won two! The take and make! It tastes surprisingly good, actually, still. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! I can't say it enough. It's been such a long journey from, you know, going from a hospital bed, not knowing if you're gonna drive again, to back on top, man. I came here to get, to get Subaru a championship, bottom line, and uh, this is what motivates me to wake up in the morning. It, it's why I put in the training I do, and, and we're a championship team, and we just got to keep executing the way we are, and uh, I think we'll have a great shot at it this year. It's a great result for the team at ERX, 1-2. In theory, you go away and you're thinking, okay, everything's cool, but if you look at the championship standings, it is super tight at the top, and it's the, the regulars. It's the Hanson brothers up against Pastrana and Speed from Subaru, so the challenge is on. Next time, on Launch Control. The rally team looks to rebound after a difficult New England forest rally. Caution light in. Just don't mess up. I just like to go hard, so we might just do that. And very, very slippery. Okay. This is the best I've been feeling in the car all season. But the process of winning a championship is never straightforward. He shows up there and he's ready to win. It's never over until it really is over. Uh, Titans fall. Oh. That's next time on Launch Control.